What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Power Block 4, February 16th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deergan, alongside me, as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Bayonetta 2. Yes. I was. I didn't know where you were going with that. I didn't know if we were doing like pow block after hours or something. <laughs> well, that's well, that's what Bandana does when when she get her uh, outfit cut off. She's like, ah, oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> then she uh, flips and kicks an a angel on the ear. <laughs> she just in the sun. Right. I'm so excited, dude. I got my copy early. Although, <sighs> I since we live in an apartment building with like. Not that people are shady, but you never want to leave packages out in the hallway. Yeah, you know, uh, I have I have all my packages shipped to my parents' house, and uh, it's far away, so I didn't go get it today. <laughs> at but, the time of this recording, yeah, right. At the time of this recording, it's Thursday, but uh, Amazon was nice enough to ship me the the game a day early. Thanks, Amazon. You're the best. Yeah, uh, I will be at a. Uh, another store getting it yeah. picking up the game yeah dude speaking of bayonetta not really bayonetta stuff but we have so much to talk about yes. so much has happened since monday when we recorded last it's like story 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 rumor rumor news news story rumor news ah so excited so much so much ed ah uh, man Woo. Ed, what have you been playing while oh. I open this window? Because it's warm in here. So, everybody, uh, I'm going to start off with my Xbox One. I've been playing Doom and uh, getting a little bit further into the game. Man, blowing up demons and uh, <laughs> just just doing glory kills and finding the secrets. I've really been enjoying that game. Uh, one of my friends on Twitter, he's streaming uh, the Doom game on um, on his Twitch channel. So I was watching it and I was just like, man, I need to finish this game. And so when, after he got done playing, he just kind of inspired me to uh, play Doom. So uh, yeah, I'm working on Doom for Xbox One. Uh, PS4, uh, finish Icono class really great game um i haven't played celeste yet but it's kind of in my game of the year nominations uh uh, uh for a top game um i do want to try out celeste to co- kind of compare them compare both games to see which one is equal better or less uh but a kind of class i truly truly enjoy i'm also playing yakuza zero getting further into that game uh kicking fools and uh I, I uh drop kick one guy out the window. <laughs> I was just like, this game is fantastic. Still, <laughs> like this, the y- Yakuza series, it's just so good in this cutscenes and in this brawling aspects. But um, enjoying that, um, playing Master Hunter World on Xbox One and PS4. Um, I got to catch up on my PS4 character, get them further on in it. Uh, but I'm loving the game. Uh, a meow skiller uh cat chef um he's like at the canteen that uh him and his two cats uh or palicos they uh cook your food (laughs) and the animation is so funny that all i could do is just laugh and i pretty much go to him every time before i go start a mission and i just love how this beat up cat just be like and then he'll put like a little seasoning or some kind of uh delicate um item on there and then uh hand it to you and you just you and your uh palico go to town eating the food it's so so good really enjoying that uh for nintendo switch uh played zeta blade chronicles 2 uh got back into that game it was grinding like crazy so now i gotta uh do some more stuff um uh, in the game i think what i'm gonna try to do is just trying to level up my characters as much as i feel like it and then when i go on new game plus do like the side stories and stuff like that like, you know i don't have to do everything now because the new game plus is there and i think when i'm powerful i can move the game a little bit faster um with that 
So uh, play that. Uh, finish graceful a splash machine. Like I said on Monday's episode, um, really enjoyed that game. If you have have it, I think it's on Xbox One and PS4. But if you have a Nintendo Switch, it's a great game to pick up. I zoned into that game for the for the like the last two months that I've been playing it. I definitely definitely been enjoying it. Of course, Blaster Master Zero Golf Story. I've been playing. Um, I put Lost uh, Sphere to the side because I started playing. Playing, it'll do and now i'm putting that to the side because now i want to start doing also on my switch and get through that game um but that's all i've been playing uh just like Corey said i plan on picking up bayonetta 2 so that'll probably be my weekend game so next time you guys uh hear us talking about what we've been playing that'll be how to be the one um i i Plenty on also to start Hellblade for PS4 because I want to finish that because I'm going to be having a discussion about that game real soon. So yeah, that's all I've been. That's what I've been playing. Nice. That's a lot. That's a lot more than I've been playing. The last dude, the last two weeks, maybe two. Yeah, about two weeks has been like for not being super busy. It's been really busy for me. And like next week, I'm going to be able to say like what's been happening in my life recently but like (laughs) uh yeah it's just it's just been so busy man i i've only played i've been trying to finish celeste and like i only i only get around to playing like two or three screens at a time before i'm like okay i'm gonna stop playing before i get super frustrated you know and that's kind of like the pace i am playing that game same as super meat boy still Uh like two or three levels at a time and then I and then I'm done. Like I don't want to like. It's I'm not in the mood to like power through twenty levels of each of those games. You know, they're right? Just, I they're games where I'm like I can play like two or three levels or two or three screens at a time, and quit and be like I accomplished something in this game. And I want to I want those games to keep being that for me, right? So, right. uh play a little bit of NBA 2K18. Finally got the roster updates. Thank you. Jeez, the new look Cavs are great. Fantastic. Yes. Oh, man. As a as a big Cavs fan, I'm very happy with what I've seen from they they for those who don't follow sports, the Cavs uh made some huge trades last week and uh they're really paying off. They are really really paying off and uh in NBA 2K18, they're really good still. So, so so it so it already did the update already the yeah. trades and stuff. Yeah, they update every Thursday. I want to say every Thursday night, uh, mm-hmm. they they update the rosters. So, and then they this this Thursday, well today tonight at like midnight, they are adding the 2018 All Star teams to the game. So, oh nice. Yeah, so you'll be able to play as both of those teams uh, as well. So, yes. Uh, so I've been playing that. Uh, it's man, I I like that game. I just wish I had more time to like really dive into the, like what that game offers because it's really fun. I just would rather be playing other games, you know. <laughs> uh, but let's see what else was. I? Oh, uh, I picked up Lego Marvel Super Heroes two this week. Yeah, I've been playing that. And uh, it's it's a Lego game. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it, except that it's a Lego game, and I don't know what you're going to expect. But uh, I'm not far enough to know like all the unlockable characters and stuff in it. But so far, I've only gotten through the first couple Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, you start off as the Guardians of the Galaxy, and you're playing through. So uh, it's fun. Okay. It's good. Uh, I mean, it's... a it's a Lego game with the Marvel characters instead of Star Wars or Indiana Jones. So, uh, I wish they would port the Indiana Jones one though to the Switch. It'd be really great. I think they should do a Lego collection. I mean, they're all collections though. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. Indi- Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter—they're all like all of the movies. So. Well, yeah, but like all of those games in one in one or two collections, because I think they got more of the Star Wars Lego games than all the other ones. It's like about what five of them, about five, four or five Lego games that Star uh, Wars. There's there's uh, well, there's Lego Star Wars one and two. Lego Star Wars one is the original trilogy. Lego Star Wars two is the prequels. 
Then they have the complete saga, which is one through six. And then they have Lego Star Wars three, which is the Clone Wars TV show. And then they have Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, which is episode seven. And then the DLC for that was Rogue One. So yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on with Star Wars. I I I think maybe they'll release a full Star Wars collection at the end of not when nine comes out. Okay. And then it'll be like one through nine, Rogue One, whatever nine hundred movies they put out in between there because it's <laughs> part of the Disney machine now. Right. I still uh, need to watch that last Star Wars movie. I liked it. You know, I know a lot of people in our kind of circle circle didn't really care for it, but I liked it. I thought it was there's a couple moments of that movie I'm like, oh okay. Okay. Uh I'm not gonna spoil anything, but there's a part probably twenty minutes into the movie where you're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's like space space battles and laser swords aside that's pretty hard to believe even in the star wars universe that's, so that's bunkers it's yeah nonsense. yeah uh but i i mean i really liked it my wife loved it so i mean it, i i don't know i don't know what people want anymore man i'm just like look it's a movie get over it i mean it it's Jeez. not everything is going to be for everybody and like if you like the original trilogy the prequels probably weren't for you. If you enjoyed the prequels, the new ones probably aren't for you. You know, like these are like Star Wars has always been kind of for kids, you know, like the the 8 to 14 range for kids, yeah. you know. So like who cares if a 40-year-old man doesn't like this movie, right? Who cares? Just shut up and watch it. It's it's laser swords and and spaceship battles. <laughs> I mean, come <laughs> on. Uh you know, so uh, yeah, I hope. I, yeah, I'm gonna try to go see Black Panther uh, this weekend. I probably got to try. I got to try to buy tickets online. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, I need. We still, we still need to see Thor Ragnarok. I we yeah, might I need to see that soon. We might, we might see Black Panther in a couple of weeks when like the crowds start dying down, and we might go on the five dollar Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it looks really good. I just, uh, I don't want to fight the crowds, man. And like, I mean, I don't want to bring like news stories outside of games into the show, but like every day you're hearing something crazy happening in like a public space that's supposed to be safe. And you're just like, it just prevents me more and more from wanting to leave my, the <laughs> game, this game room, you know? <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, so, uh, but yeah, that's kind of all I've been playing. I've I've been watching some movies lately actually and like I've been watching some YouTube videos and movies lately like I'm really uh Giant Bomb has this playlist that I didn't know existed called the old game show where they mm-hmm. just go through and play like old obscure games and they're not like they're not games that you even know of either they're like Atari games and uh some of them are or obscure Saturn games and like it's it's fun like the other day they played they're like their new. Th- they always have some weird thing that's like in their, like inside jokes or whatever. And yeah. during Thanksgiving and Christmas, it was the pest, the movie, the pest. And like right now, it's Garfield. Is like they're all about Garfield right now for some oh, reason. Wow! And they played uh, Garfield Lasagna World Tour or whatever. <laughs> it's like this really awful <laughs> 3D platformer <laughs> for PS2. Wow. But it was funny. It was Which really is cool. weird. You're watching that, and I'm watching like Test Chamber and uh, replay for Game Informer on YouTube. I know. I've been watching that too. They've been playing uh, some vampire game for PS1. Yeah, <laughs> that game looks terrible. Yeah, it looks really bad. It looks <laughs> real bad, man. Uh, but it's funny. It's always funny when they play bad games for Super Replay and stuff. So, I think it's Vampire Hunter D. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, an anime I see, but the get that game looks horrendous. I'm like, ooh, this looks bad. Yeah, huh? I just, I'm looking like I don't have to be at work till eleven tomorrow, so like I'm really looking forward to sleeping in past eight o'clock for the first time this week. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, <laughs> look, I just like, ah, man, I because like. Even on my days off, I've had to get up early to go do something, you know, like I I just I'm 
I'm looking forward to getting up early. And uh, you know what? Screw it. I guess I'm just going to say it. Like, I got a new job. And uh, I don't know if I said that on the show or not yet. But, like, I did get a new job. And I'm really excited because my cousin is training me. Because <laughs> he's the one that got me in there. So, like, that's going to ease the... It's Because, like, in all honesty, this is really the first new job I've had in, like, <laughs> over Years? a decade over a decade so like i've been working at the restaurant for since i was in high school you know i started there washing dishes and then i moved up to like running their kitchen and now it's like this is the first time i've left that that uh company (laughs) in 13 years it'll be 13 years in march at the end of march like wow so i mean i mean i've had like other little jobs here and there but nothing like permanent you know so it's uh this is gonna be a big change uh i mean then like this show's schedule might change a little bit just to warn uh listeners a little bit not that like we're still gonna record on tuesday to or on mondays and and thursdays but uh yeah. until i get my new schedule figured out which is like i'm gonna have it i'm gonna have an eight to five job monday through friday <laughs> like that's going to be weird for me. I'm going to have nights and weekends off for the first time. Yay. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of changes coming in that regard. And I just, for actually like for both of us, Gus, your, your changes is happening and I'm waiting for my change to happen. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how all of that goes. That's going to be true. Entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Like getting our schedules lined up again, will be like, you know, it, it, it won't, change that much it's just gonna be like instead of at like one o'clock in the afternoon we're gonna be recording it maybe <laughs> five six seven uh, p.m so uh, yeah but you know what i was thinking though too it's gonna give us time to actually do stuff that we've been talking about doing for six months and just <laughs> haven't gotten around to it yes so, that is true i'm pretty excited i'm excited because i'm gonna hook my super nintendo up and play some games because Watching these old game shows has got me wanting to play old games again. And yes, thinking about getting a second uh, Super Nintendo to hack and like put a bunch of old Super Nintendo games on, like Ooh. Turtles in Time. Well, because not, I want one, not, not, not hack, uh, upgrade, upgrade. Because like I want to play like Turtles in Time and Turtles in Time. <laughs> <laughs> tournament fighter <sighs> pretty much ninja turtles i want to play ninja turtles and it's not on here <laughs> yes uh the i want to play super mario all-stars the those versions of those games because i like those versions better uh yes uh you know i want to i just want to mess around with it you know and like oh actually what i'm going to do is get an one like a pure one and leave it sealed in the box. I'm just gonna leave it sealed, and then this is the one I'm gonna mess with. Yes. So, um, and then when the NES comes out, I might do that the same thing to that when they re-release the NES classics. So, mm-hmm. uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. See what happens. So we've got a lot to cover today, Ed. But before we cover all before we get into covering all this news stories i do want to say we're going to try something out we're going to try to get people more involved in the show besides question block okay uh so if there's something that you want us to cover on the show uh that we didn't cover on the previous episode and you think maybe we should cover it uh instead of writing in a question about it uh we would like you to email nintendopowerblock at gmail.com with the subject line news bits and, uh, you know, say what the subject is and place the link or the source into the email. And, uh, you know, we, we will cover it for you. You know, we, we don't get around to covering everything, obviously. Yes. Because we want to keep a nice, compact, conversational show. I mean, today's show is going to be kind of <laughs> long, but I mean. It, yeah. Yeah, but you know, if you if there's something you want us to cover and and something specifically we'll cover it, uh just email us nintendopowerblock at gmail dot com or tweet at us ngr at ngr powerblock with the link and we'll look into it. So uh with that said, 
Oh man, energy drinks, burps. Yeah. Mm. Chipotle and quesadilla burps. Oh man. <laughs> Let me tell you, Ed. I had an adventure for my stomach today, and it is not going to feel good coming out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. uh, my I I went to lunch with my mom today, and we ate at Chili's, and I got the quesadilla, the yeah. bacon, the chicken bacon ranch quesadilla. No, no, and no. And that no, was no. good. And it comes with that really good spicy dipping ranch sauce yes. stuff. Yeah. And then like the spicy like tomato salsa on the side. Like Ooh. it was really good. And then and then I told her I didn't want dessert, but she bought a molten lava cake anyway. And that thing was so good. And then for dinner, I had a ch- burrito from Chipotle. So <laughs> I mean, if I'm looking extra round on video, I I'm I don't care, but if I run to the bathroom with my butt on fire, it's because that's what I eat today. <laughs> uh, and dude, I feel it so much. It's so bad. It is so bad. <laughs> Dou- double Mexican style Southwest style food in one day is not. I mean, having it once in one day is not smart sometimes. Right. And I had it twice. And- and the bad thing is, is that I was thinking of chili, so getting their uh baby back ribs, like I was just like, oh, he went to chili's now, so <laughs> now I might go there tomorrow, like order some chilies for pickup and just be like, I need your ribs, some fries, and that good old barbecue sauce. Yeah. Oh, it was so good though. It was so good. Uh, anyways, instead of uh Nintendo food food block, we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this news stuff. So, Nintendo uh Nintendo themed masking tape is coming for Nintendo Labo. Uh this Nintendo themed masking tape will keep your Labo stuck on brand. And this is something else too I want to do. I I've started I'm going to tell you where the story is from because some people have been asking me to hey, when you read a story, tell us where it's from so we can read it. So, uh this is from Nintendo Life, one of our favorite uh I want to say it's a Nintendo fan site, but it's like so much more than that now. It's not even, I wouldn't even consider a fan site. I'd consider it a kind of the UK's premier Nintendo site almost. Pretty much. Uh, And they cover a ton of of North American stuff too. So, I mean, it's not like I'm reading UK only stuff. But uh, Nintendo Labo is only two two months out. So the big end is slowly beginning to open up pre-orders across the world and unveil official new items to support the cardboard folding and create and creative programming. Uh, and that includes, and that includes unveiling a new line of masking tapes complete with Nintendo theme patterns. They're currently not available for purchase in the West. Uh, not yet at least, but they will be made available through official Japanese my Nintendo store. Each contain each pack contains two designs. One has a yellow, design based around the question blocks and uh, red polka dot using mushrooms. Uh, The other is a bullet bill theme one and the other one is based around booze. No word yet on official price point. This is cool. Yeah, I seen them and I was just like, I want those. Like, I want them not even for Nintendo Labo stuff. I want to put the (laughs) the tape around my laptop case. (laughs) Exactly. Like, (laughs) They're going to be so cool to have. Um, it kind of reminds me of the 3DS cases that that were only in Japan mm-hmm. um, that people were able to buy, buy and they never came to America. I think with these masking tape coming in, uh, of course, people are going to use it for, for lab or for other purposes. But just to have it. And just to just to look at it, just be like, oh, this is so cool. I I think it would be awesome, and it'll be cool if you could just like go to Ace Hardware or some and buy them and, and stuff. Like that would be awesome. Like they get try to get in as many stores here in America as they can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm really excited for these these tapes. Like I. <sighs> I I'm I don't I'm not really excited for Labo, but like the things surrounding Labo have me quite mm-hmm. interested. <laughs> and so, you know, when this tape comes out, I might just scoop up a few boxes for you know, handy projects around the house. <laughs> um our next news story also comes from Nintendo Life. Ed, are you ready? 
Uh, Jack Fu has an official release window of spring 2018. If you have fond memories of Shaq Fu games during the 16-bit era, then you're in luck. Shaq is back with Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn, which is headed to Nintendo Switch at retail this spring. Uh, Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn is an intense, action-packed beat-em-up, which sees players take on the role of the unstoppable Shaquille O'Neal as he fights his way through the hordes of hell and Hollywood. Master devastating combos, battle outlandish celebrity bosses, and take on all comers with an array of weapons, including katanas, shurikens, and baseball bats. Channel Shaq's alter egos, Big Daddy O, and Big Diesel in epic battles in the successor to the worst game ever on a mission to restore Shaq's legacy. (laughs) (laughs) No! (laughs) This game is going to be a guy match. No! Look at this box art. It's amazing. It looks a mess. Oh, you can pre-order it on Amazon already? Nope. Not on the American store. Dang it. Yes. Dang it. It's coming. I'm going to do it soon. And you'll no. be the first to know. You'll be the first to know. And I will, everybody, because I'll be, like, playing something. <laughs> I'll hear a key. Like, oh, Corey messaged me. What the world is this mess? And they'd be like, <laughs> I have the Shaq food. I'd be like, oh, dang it. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I'm or I'll so get excited. some video of it or something. I'm I'm more excited to like play it and just see how good slash bad it is than I am actually for the game. <laughs> I'm not really excited for this game. I hope you know that. It's just I know how irritated you get when I talk about it, and I'm just Cause like, it's, yes, because I know it's garbage. <laughs> no, it's not. It's gonna be great. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's gonna be better than the Super Nintendo one. Oh, well, yeah, that is true. I'll give it that. (laughs) Okay, sticking uh, with Nintendo Life. And, Ed, you brought this to me earlier in the week. Uh, A Spyro Trilogy coming to PS4 this year. Uh, But what does that mean for a Switch version? Uh, Spyro the Dragon Trilogy Remaster may be coming to PS4 this year, according to rumors. Uh, Having a one-year exclusivity deal... Uh, coming that meaning it'll come to switch and other platforms next year uh this is uh this uh year is similar in or this game will be similar in scope to the crash bandicoot insane trilogy uh which is also rumored to be getting a switch port later in the year so yeah and they haven't officially announced the spiral hd trilogy just yet right it's all Um, rumor still yeah, it's all rumors. So, but if it does come, they're looking into pouring it to other consoles. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, the crash, the crash insane trilogy is rumored to be coming to Switch this year too. Which oh, I'm yeah. way more interested. Honestly, I'm way more interested in Spyro than Crash. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm not really interested in either of these. <laughs> well, it's it's weird because for me, I've beaten. Uh, like Crash One and Two, I beat it a hundred percent complete. I never beat three, but Spiral, I beat one and two a hundred percent, but I never got a chance to play three. Yeah, and but like, dang it! Every time I open this window, my nose gets runny. But like, Activision has this weird, like, interesting marketing. Of like, they they could potentially have a great market. This could potentially sell better than Crash. Because mm-hmm. Crash was just basically for the people who pl- grew up playing Crash, right? Nobody yes. really cares about Crash now. Where Spyro, people cared about Spyro back then, but they also have the Skylanders crowd that they could scoop in here. Because if we all remember correctly, Skylanders started as Spyro. Uh, right. So they could easily scoop that, uh, the kids who grew up playing Skylanders into this. So this could this remaster could potentially like even if they packaged it with a weird Skylander, you know, just like a a show of like, hey, still Spyro Skylander still a thing. We might make another one, right? And see, a lot of people who played Skylanders when it first started out don't know where Spyro actually came from. So it'll be a good history refreshener for them. Yeah. Uh, or you know to understand, hey kids, I'm like even though you got 
this looking better version of the game, this is what Spyro was. And Spyro was a difficult game to play because of the control. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Yeah. I struggled with that game, but yeah, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind having this on Switch because I like 3D platformers. Uh mm-hmm. You know, I I like Banjo Kazooie. I like Jack and Daxter, and this is kind of like in the vein of Jack and Daxter, the first one. So, uh, the games included will be Spyro the Dragon, Spyro Ripto's Rage, and Spyro Three Year the Dragon. So, uh, rumored to be coming yes. to Switch sometime in 2019. Uh, everything's still unconfirmed, obviously, but uh, Nintendo Life Source is Kotaku U- Kotaku UK. So. Uh, Kotaku's pretty on the nose about stuff like this. I, I, I'm pretty sure. So, yes. uh, moving on, Ed. This one's exciting. This one excites me because this is what I've been talking about since Mo- uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force. And we're going to have discussion about this. Go ahead. Okay, Metroid Prime Four could have online multiplayer. Coming from Nintendo Everything and Nintendo Today. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors surrounding the upcoming Metroid Prime 4, which is apparently being developed by Namco Bandai. It's Bandai Namco, uh, Nintendo today. Sorry, uh, but I have to correct you. Uh, Now a new rumor suggests that the game might also include online multiplayer as well. That's according to a LinkedIn page from one of the game's developers. Last week we learned from several sources uh, that Metroid Prime 4 is being developed by Bandai Namco. Really? Uh, Who are... (laughs) They have it two different ways in the same article. (laughs) I'm going to smack these people. Uh, (laughs) Who are working with Nintendo on a new Switch action game. If the game indeed has online multiplayer or some sort of online component, it could help sell Nintendo's new paid online service, which launches later this year. Uh, There are links to the LinkedIn page and to the uh, news story on a different website to the Metroid Prime 4 being developed by Bandai Namco. So thoughts ed okay because i'm excited this is going to happen because metro prior to had a multiplayer uh but it was, it was all good and it was good uh me and larry played it and he beat my tail at it but i had well so you're fun. also playing the metroid king of our <laughs> of our circle here that, that is true that is true and plus i own metro prior to a gamecube and i've never played the online portion of it so and so you know all four people had to be in a room um this is not surprising to me if it does happen and i believe it will happen um i think it's cool uh, that they uh, hopefully they have like a player online multiplayer um if they could get the controls right, if the uh, areas are really fun and fast paced, um, I think it's going to be a hit among players. And um, it's just, I feel like it's going to be just an extra feature for the game. And I think it's it's going for a lot of Switch players, if they're not playing Splatoon on Mario Kart, I think it's going to be a Friday night game. Be like, hey, anybody want to hook up and do some Metroid? You know, want to play some Metroid? And they're probably taking ideas from Federal Federation force and implementing it and to that so it'll be it, it literally will be cool um you know playing like their style of rocket league or something like with soccer well, or something. honestly like what this could like it, it, there's there's a lot of speculation that S- nintendo might be working on a kind of throwback uh you know golden eye perfect dark style multiplayer game like what mm-hmm. if that is what if that is this but not not to the point of like perfect dark or golden eye but more like halo 1 style where like you could have sp- they they want you to play split screen with your friends but it also have uh online obviously uh type stuff and like i don't think cuz i mean what i want is like almost like a call of duty perk system or a destiny style exotic uh, system or something like that where like you can add things to your guns or pick up certain things that have certain abilities that make your character differentiate itself from the other players on the battlefield type stuff but I think they're going to reserve that I think they would reserve that for like a Federation Force 2 
And mm-hmm. I don't think like any of that stuff's I don't think like the Federation Four stuff is gonna happen with Metroid Prime Four. I think they're gonna want if they continue a Federation Four style game, they're gonna wanna keep those games separate. Uh you know what I, w- I would love for them to have uh capture the flag style with your ship. So you infiltrate the other team's base and you take the parts from their ship to implement it into your ship and whoever gets the parts uh, and get away wins. Like, I think that would be so amazing. I think that would be so fun. Yeah. Yeah, I I really want like a kind of old school Halo type feel but mm-hmm. with modern sensibilities. Like, I think Halo 4 multiplayer is like the closest that we could get to that where like it feels like halo but there's a sprint button you can have loadouts you can have specific weapons loaded into your character like but i also want like a little bit of armor customization like i don't want i don't want 16 samus's running around the battlefield or 12 or whatever it'll probably be like four on four six on six i'm sure yeah uh if they do multiplayer but like a color coded Samus. Like color like not even that. Like I want like I want to be able to customize a bounty hunter. I want to be able to like, unlock helmets, unlock the biggest shoulder pads I can. I want to be able mm-hmm. to unlock, you know, well, suits I think you're probably I think what will happen is that you'll probably uh, be able to unlock that in the main game. Uh like when you find secrets and read stuff, it, it unlocks stuff. Oh, I'm sure you'll be able to do that in the main game. game too. But I, well, I, well, that's why I said that you'll probably be able to do that in a main game. Yeah. Uh, but I think I just think it would be really cool to for this to like happen. You know, I think I think I think a lot of people get the Metroid game they want, the Metroid Prime mm-hmm. game they want, but this will also sell. The Metroid game to people who are into online shooters, who are into yes, you know it'll it'll make Metroid more appealing to people who aren't fans of Metroid. And you know I know there's a lot of purists out there to say oh one multiplayer in my Metroid, but like you got to look at the realities of the business. You don't want a 12 hour game and then people trading it in or selling it back or you know stuff like that. And you you want the replay to be worth the purchase, right? Uh, so that's, uh, that's all really. I think if they do like customer, uh, customer, if they do customization in the game, I think it would be cool to offer your customization to other players that whoever wins it, whoever wins that match, if they like it, they could accept it. Like Mm -hmm. that's the trophy that they win. I think that would be cool. Like if you, if you like, are playing like I think what they could do it's similar to what Call of Duty does but except Call of Duty makes you like purchase the parts yeah I think it would be cool if like unlocking uh parts for your character could be called bounty hunts and you go through and do challenges to unlock those parts and like when like the top three players show up like in victory or whatever it shows you what parts they had and what bounties are attached to those parts yes and like that's yeah and and you could go through and like maybe you get uh 50 headshots unlocks a uh i don't know a better scope for like a sniper type weapon yeah or uh maybe if you scan somebody if you scan somebody like 30 times you get a better vi- you get a cool visor or something you know like little little bounties like that and it'd be called like bounty they would actually be bounty hunting you could call them bounty hunts and like maybe there's week weekend events similar to what splatoon does with splatfest and like yeah if you participate in the event you get to keep that event's armor and you have to bounty hunt the the armor pieces that are available for that weekend yeah i like that so uh, I'm trying to think of like a simple like because I know Nintendo's not going to go the whole Call of Duty route and be able to like okay you have perks you have all that even though that's like I would kind of like to see a version of that even though I guess they did do it in Splatoon though because you you can add perks to the clothing in Splatoon 
Yeah, but I mean, it, it would be fun. It would just be fun to have that option that provides the replay of the game, you know, to a hundred percent it, or to see what you could get, you know, without doing microtransactions or anything like that. Like that, that would be fun. Like we, like that would not only reward the player, but it will all always give them something to do almost every week to look forward to. Yeah. to to unlock more of the game. Yeah, and it would also like benefit that online service greatly to have a yes. per, like a have your premier first person shooter even though like Metroid's not a shooter, but like you know, Metroid Prime is set up to appeal to that audience. And if you have multiplayer that appeals to that audience, that would 20 bucks a year to play that online for like 2 or 3 years. Pfft. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Or or uh, like when you was mentioning your body hunts, like you grab three other people and you guys go through a level that's a me- that's in this regular Metroid style, and then all four of you come together with your new pieces that you guys found, and all of you guys use those new pieces to defeat the boss. Mm-hmm. And if you defeat them, you guys get to keep your pieces, and now you can use them in the multiplayer mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. Man, now now I'm I'm eager to see what that online because that would get me to jump back into like an online multiplayer game consistently, <laughs> you know. And I could play with like, like I could play with you and Jesse and not feel like I'm an awful first person shooter <laughs> player and just hang out with friends while we're playing, you know, because you guys won't yell at me because I suck. Uh, so well, I'll be quiet. You know how I do. I know you'll be all <laughs> concentrating and stuff, and Jesse and I will be like, "Did Ed? Is Ed gone? Where'd he go?" <laughs> I'll be like, "Uh, Ed." I'm like I'm here, guys. So, plus, if you're playing on the Switch, I can just take it in the living room and play on the couch. Because, <laughs> like, that's the reason why I don't do it now is because, like, I, I, when my wife's awake, I would like to spend time with her, and you know, so like we watch. I mean, even if it's like bad TV or whatever, we're still spending time together, and that's why I don't right. play like multiplayer and destiny or any other well i don't play multiplayer and destiny because it's not great but like you know what i mean like <laughs> there's a reason why i'm not consistently playing a multiplayer game right now so yeah uh but yeah i can't wait to see what kind of multiplayer stuff they have in metroid i if it i comes. would love to see federation force like a destiny style metroid game but on the switch in a proper version but we'll see that's a conversation for expansion pack or whatever so yeah um all right we're gonna move on to this next story uh this is from ign nintendo says ea is satisfied with fifa sales and more to come third party publishers are all smiles with the switch it seems uh nintendo france has said that ea is quote satisfied with the sales performance of fifa 18 on switch uh in that region teasing further announcements to come Take talking to French outlets Le Numeriques Felipe Nivelle, man, I'm really good at French. Uh, general manager of Nintendo France said that FIFA 18 on Switch was a quote test match for EA, which is satisfied with the result. The game has sold 73,000 physical units in France alone, and Laval expects the game to sell twice the, that amount with the upcoming World Cup in Russia. Ubisoft and Konami are, are other third-party publishers who are reportedly happy with their performance of titles on the Switch. FIFA 18 was released for Nintendo Switch last year alongside the PC, PS4, and Xbox One versions, uh, and it was custom-built b- rather than a port, although it didn't didn't have as many features as the PC or console versions. Uh, so, I enjoyed FIFA on Switch. I st- still, I mean, I still have it. I didn't get rid of it, but like, you know, I you were here when I got it. Yeah. And it was pretty it was pretty impressive for this uh, handheld version. She looking at it when you put it when you docked it on your big screen. I'm like, good night. This game looks gorgeous. It looks better. And FIFA looks better than NBA 2K. I'm not afraid to say that. Uh, but I like as great as NBA 2K is. Like I always think EA's games look better than. 2K's games, but 2K mm. 2K's fundamentals are way better than than EA's. So, uh, but I enjoyed 
uh, FIFA on Switch, and that makes me happy that they're looking at other games to bring over, which means I they, I better see Madden on Switch this year. I think you will, dude. If Madden's it, not on Switch this year, I'm gonna I'm just be like, look, every I think everybody's gonna be yelling at EA, just be like, why don't you got this game for us to play on the go? Because everybody's gonna be wanting to play Madden on the go. Yeah, like. Like why why not? If if you're happy with seventy three thousand copies in one country, just think that in America, because I think I think FIFA did like FIFA probably did very successful for EA to change their mind about supporting Switch. Yeah, because don't forget they said we don't have nothing else planned for Switch. Like they they kind of shut off any support right. for Switch. Now all of that has changed. And then they kind of like said Faye was coming to Switch, and then they kind of didn't say anything about it afterwards. <laughs> like, right. And I mean Faye is out today. If you're listening to this on Friday, it's out today alongside Bayonetta, and it's like. He didn't really see a lot of it. So, I mean, it's getting decent reviews across the board, but, I mean, Faye is going to have to wait for me. Like, it, it's it's just going to have to wait. I am too into, like, I cannot wait to rip open that package and play Bayonetta. <laughs> I cannot wait to talk about it next week. I just... Yes! Oh, Bayonetta's going to be great. Uh, All right, moving on. Speaking of sales, Splatoon 2 is very popular in Japan and has recently surpassed the 2 million mark in sales in japan alone which makes it the highest selling game in over 15 years ed 15 years uh this this is from nintendo today by the way uh for those who are keeping up uh that makes it the first switch game to reach 2 million sales in japan faster than both breath of the wild and super mario odyssey uh, earlier this week, Nintendo announced that Splatoon 2 Starter Edition, which we covered on Monday, on Tuesday's episode. So, uh, it's if you didn't hear, it includes a 100-page game guide and a cool sticker set, which I really want that sticker set, man. Yeah. <laughs> they, they have a picture of all the stickers here, and it's like, man, I want to put like some of the Splatoon stuff on my laptop case. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, man, that's exciting. I'm really glad. Like... I was I I didn't get into Splatoon as much as I wanted to because I was playing a lot of arms at that point. Uh, <laughs> but I'm really glad to see Splatoon is be, is as successful as it is. I was yes. really worried on the Wii U like that game not being very popular and and for like the day that it came out for like almost like the next 4 months it stayed selling and yeah. people people still today who own a Wii U are still buying Dude, Splatoon. That game is still like really like that first game people are still playing that first game yeah uh yeah i and and i think what helped splatoon also is like nintendo's nintendo's promised two years of free content for that game so Mm -hmm. like that i mean they did that for the first game i think it was only a year of free content for the first game but still that helped that game grow an audience and every like three or four weeks they were having a splat fest every every couple weeks they're getting new weapons new maps new modes like that was cool you know and they really kind of build upon that and you know splatoon 2 is really splatoon 1.5 but like they did a lot of cool quality of life things for that game like being able to change the perks on your clothes and adding cool new weapons like the dualies and uh enhancing older weapons like the like the paint roller that I like to use has a vertical swipe now and when you splat someone instead of a ver- instead of a horizontal one so it acts more as a shotgun instead of a uh, you know just flattening someone which is like it's a small change but it's when you're in a heat of battle like that really helps you know and that's why I yeah. stick with the paint roller and uh, <laughs> I I really like Splatoon. I wish I had more time to play that game too. You know, I need to. Yeah, that, I, I'm just gonna buy the starter pack and just just dive in and just get up some good old gaming in. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. Uh, so, all right, we're gonna move on to our next story, Ed. And you brought this to my attention earlier this week too. Uh, THQ Nordic acquires Deep Silver owner Koch Media for 150 million dollars. Uh, the former THQ brands all united under one roof. Uh, the deal 
is for the entirety of Koch's business, which includes video game publisher Deep Silver, along with uh, multimedia. There's there's magazines and European TV stations and stuff involved too, uh, but we really only care about the video games parts. Uh, yeah. Deep Silver oversees franchises such as Saints Row, Dead Island, Metro, and uh, publisher for titles like Bloodstained, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and Radiant Historia. Uh, the deal means that franchises separated at the death of D- THQ, like Darksiders and Red Faction, are now under the same banner. Um, man, Nordic Games is really pushing that THQ, <laughs> really trying to beat a dead horse. Yeah, you know, uh, that's really good. I'm really proud of them uh, getting their franchise back. Um, hopefully, they will be able to produce better quality content and market their games uh, better than original THQ. Um, and maybe Dead Rising 2 may get a resurgence. Maybe we'll see that. Who knows? Uh, Volitia it got another triple A game that they're making. Uh, maybe Darksiders 3 could come to Switch. Maybe. Maybe 1 and 2 can get ports. Because <laughs> like, they right. left those games stranding on Wii U. <laughs> I mean, they're on the other consoles too, but like I know Darksiders one was promised on Wii U and like it it came after you know the Switch was out and nobody right. cared anymore. So uh I still got it though. Still got <laughs> it. Uh haven't opened it yet. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh but like I, I know like the THQ thing is like a big joke in the gaming space, but like I think it's a cool thing to see that this company is it cares about this like people liking this dead company so much that they're trying to rebuild it essentially and mm-hmm. kind of just like hey we know that you know some one thing tore this company apart and like it probably didn't deserve that so uh yeah i'm excited to see some of these projects come like i'm i'm excited for metro exodus i know it's not coming to switch but uh i, I think the metro games are interesting uh, yeah and I think Metro Exodus looks great. So uh, it it would be so good if they could get the WWE license back and uh bring like no the old N sixty four games <laughs> uh and some and and uh and also maybe the P uh, did they do SmackDown versus Raw? Yeah. Like the PS2 games, yeah, I would love to see those games come back, and you know, just we. Re- re- I would love I to mean, see. I would love to see a new Red Faction, also, like maybe like a proper reboot of that series, mm-hmm. and like really go in and like take what made those first two games like really interesting, and like I don't know, I I like the third person perspective of of Gorilla and Armageddon. Like, I didn't really think armageddon was a terrible game it just wasn't a good red faction game <laughs> you know because you're like it was you're expecting all this destructibility and stuff and there was some of that but it was more about like moving things with this weird gravity gun and is like building rebuilding the things and stuff mm-hmm. like instead of destruction which i think is what gorilla really thrived on yeah uh, but i would like to see a proper red faction game come back and maybe just reboot it like just reboot it don't try to build on anything that's come before it i would say do do the trilogy for switch uh, and then do a reboot what one two and and three gorilla? was yeah. there a red faction three or was that red faction gorilla uh armageddon is the last one Right, I think Gorilla was two. Gorilla was it did. No, there Red Faction one and two were for PS2, and Gorilla was three. So Armageddon is four. Yeah. So then to bring all four games there. Um, yeah, because we, yeah because Red Faction had a problem with this loading on PS2. Yeah, we went. Yeah, we, Red Faction three or Red Faction two came to GameCube. And I remember people were reporting that the GameCube version actually ran better than the PS2 version. Okay. Uh, which yeah. I have Red Faction 2 for GameCube, and let me tell you, it's a fantastic time. Nice. Yeah, I, I say do the do the uh, do the combination. Bring all four games to Switch, and you could they can make it digital if they want to. I'm fine with that. 
Uh, we'll see. I just I'm glad all these titles are back under one roof because of like there's all these weird licensing issues and stuff for older games and which company mm-hmm. do the licenses really belong to even though the other company owns the franchise rights and whatever. So uh, it's good. It's it's good. So yeah, and I got and I think I already said this, but yeah, uh, Nordic Games make some good content. Their games are good. Yeah. Um, and and you know getting the blob coming to Switch. I want to see more stuff. Yeah, that game's going to look really pretty on that screen. Yeah. Just because it's so colorful. And, like, I don't even know if the game holds up, but, like, that game, at least stylistically, is going to look great on the handheld screen. Yeah, it's going to look so clearer. Uh, um, Because I'm like, it was a Wii exclusive when it first came out. And it did good to set the four part two to come out. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to see it a little bit more clearer, like it'll stand out. Yeah. Um. Okay. Little mobile news here. Pokemon Go uh, Year of the Dog Lunar New Year event has been announced. Uh, this comes from IGN. The Pokemon Go uh, event has been announced. Uh, starts now and runs through February 17th. During the event, Poochiena, Growlithe, Eevee, Snubble, and Electric uh, spawn rates will see a boost, and catching any of the canine shaped monsters will give players triple the usual stardust. Uh, so that's cool. If I, are people still playing Pokemon Go? I can't believe that people are still playing that game. Yeah, they're still they're still playing it. I've never played it, so this does nothing for me. But yay! Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I like. I really like Growlithe. I Growlithe is like one of my favorite Pokemon, but like I'm not. I stopped playing Pokemon Go like two years ago. So, <laughs> uh, like a week after it came out, I was like, mm, "This game isn't for me," and I deleted it. <laughs> uh, but I know there's people that still like it, and so I'm not gonna put them down for that. Uh, so, this also coming from IGN. Ed Rocket League tournaments coming this spring. Beta starts this month, and tournaments will be cross-platform. Nice. Uh, Psyonix has announced tournaments will be coming to Rocket League this spring with a beta that begins this month. Details were revealed during the Rocket or revealed on the Rocket League website, which states the beta designed to test the new UI and general functionality will run from February 21st through the 23rd on Steam. The beta will allow players to create their own tournaments as well as join in competitions created by other users. Man, this game has legs. I did not think that this game would have as big of a as big a legs as it does. <sighs> What's wrong, Ed? Just nothing. Go on, good to you. Oh, uh, players want to get involved in the beta need to own a copy of Rocket League on Steam. Uh, the beta players can select tournament betas tab uh, and play on their required version. Uh, so. This game really has legs, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, I didn't get really big into Rocket League, but I, I mean, it, I, I, it, I still it, haven't brought it yet. <laughs> I know. I it coming to Switch is enticing to play it, though. I mean, it's 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 another one of those games that I always wanted to play and try to get into, but never did. Never did. Yeah. I mean, I I downloaded it when it was PlayStation Plus's game, free game, uh-huh. uh, but. I don't know, man. I just never did. So, uh, all right, Ed. Our last story comes from Nintendo Life. The Mega Man X Collection may be coming in two separate releases. Uh, the end of last year was a great one for Mega Man fans, as Capcom announced the classic game series would be continuing with Mega Man 11. Switch owners were given plenty to look forward to as well. Not only would Mega Man Legacy Collection, which is slated Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 is slated to be one release on Switch, which is great. Yes. Which is great. One cart with all 10 games on it. Yes. Yes. Uh but the Mega Man X games were revealed for a future re-release too. The details were unclear though. It was assumed that Capcom would be releasing the collection much like it did the classic games. Uh, a new listing from the Australian Classification Board has raised some eyebrows, however, as there are game ratings for both Mega Man Legacy, Mega Man, come on, Mega Man X Legacy Collection and Mega Man X Legacy Collection Two. If this turns out to be true, that means Capcom would likely be splitting the series into two halves, 
possibly even releasing the 5th through 8th entries at a later date. Hopefully Capcom clarifies this soon. It would be very surprising, but uh, might be disappointing to some. Uh, man, that's kind of... That's sad. I was yeah. hoping we'd get all 8 games on one cart. But I'll I'll do it. I'll buy it. Yeah, I, I love mean, the X series. It's not a huge. It's not a huge deal. Like I I think everybody's favorite games are what one and three anyway. I think are the two that are considered the best ones. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. I I'm excited for the Mega Man games coming to Switch though. I'm like beyond excited. Ed, it is time for the question block. Yes. Remember, you can email Nintendo Power Block at Nintendo Power Block at gmail.com with the question or with the subject line question block, and we will try to answer your questions. Also, if you want an expansion pack topic, I have exciting news for you. <gasps> but we'll reveal it on Monday. But get your questions in because we're going to do another giveaway. <gasps> yes for expansion pack so uh if you want to get your questions in we were going to start and announce the prize for the giveaway on monday uh so get your questions in you will have four weeks to get your questions in and uh we will announce the winner at the end of the four at the end of the four weeks and you will receive a nice nice prize so yay all right, Ed. Let's get this question block rolling, rolling, rolling. Woo. Sorry, I'm white. I can't help it. Uh, Deshaun Malone asks, "Do you think Nintendo could experiment with a ten to thirty dollar download only strategy with some of their lesser IP, a la an F Zero game in the vein of Fast RMX or Two D Metroid, all of the Mummy Remastered from Way Forward, or?" Make a four worlds make four worlds of a two D Mario every six months or so. Um, uh, I don't think they could, and only reason why is that Nintendo doesn't want to take that development time on making fully realized games. You know, if they're going to give you a Mario game they're going to give you the full Mario game. If they're going to give you a Kirby game, you're going to get the full Kirby game. Nintendo knows that it can make a good profit out of out of their entertainment that they're going to give you. So breaking up into small sizes for a $20 to $30 price doesn't sound reasonable. Like, even look at Snipper Clips. Like, that game is $30, and you get a, a good amount of value of levels and puzzles in that. Um, and if you already bought the game digitally, you got, like, free content for it. Like, you got the update automatically for free. Nintendo is going to give you, for their, for their hardware, full game. Um, if they're going, if they did it with the free to start games, um, uh, like the uh, the Russell's baseball or Rusty's baseball, mm -hmm. like they they try little stuff like that, um, but those weren't planned to be full games, uh, for from their IPs, so uh. If if they're gonna make a new IP that was gonna be a small thing, it would be something like Box Boy. But you even got a full game in Box Boy. Yeah. Like it's 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 somewhat short, but there's oh, a lot wanna, of replay I value. I want a trilogy there. remastered for Switch. If you don't preach, if you don't preach, oh. if you don't preach. Oh, just give me that thirty dollar cart. Box Boy, just give it to me. Just give it to me. Yes. Just give it to me. Yes. It can't be that hard. They're black and white squares, for God's sakes. <laughs> Just give it to me. I, I think we'll see it in the next direct. Or what if the Switch box was literally just a white box with the Switch logo in the corner, with two black lines in the middle for his eyes? The cover was just literally Box Boy. I would pay that right now. I would be at GameStop pre-reserving that game. Best box art ever. 
Damn, GameStop is closed. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of with Ed only for the simple fact that like Nintendo takes pride in their IP and want their IP to. I feel like Nintendo doesn't want their IP to feel devalued. You right. know, and like, yeah, they release little downloadable experiments like uh, Box Boy and Pushmo and stuff like that. Uh, but they that's what they are. They're experiments and they're games that people love, but they're not Mario and Metroid or even F Zero. You know, they don't want those franchises to feel devalued. With that said, I would totally take a like, like after the next 2d mario comes out if they released like challenge levels every six months like two mm-hmm. or like two or three worlds of challenge levels similar to what they did with um luigi the luigi expansion to new super mario brothers but like yeah actually play as mario instead of luigi and give us just more challenging levels every six months heck yeah i'd be into that i'd be so into that but only as like dlc you know what i mean Right, and but like, but Nintendo would, would rather just give you I, in my in my viewpoint they would just rather give you the full experience. Yeah, and, and like in a in a Mario game, I should say. Yeah, and uh, maybe you didn't listen to Tuesday's episode, Deshaun, but we talked a lot extensively about a way forward two D Metroid game and how yes. we want like a similar art style to Shantae. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's actually funny. Me and uh, Jesse was talking about the Metroid art style yeah. uh, to, in our chat. Yeah, I think it was in the Arsenal X chat, actually, because like, yeah, I woke was. up to like 30 messages from the Arsenal X <laughs> chat. I'm like, what happened? I was sleeping. What happened? Oh, man. Dude, something weird happened to me last night, by the way. When I was sleeping, like I went to bed kind of early last night, and I got up at like 1230 to go pee. And, like, my laptop was open, and, like, I was, I got out of bed, and, like, I always have a pair of socks and slippers and a hoodie next to the bed, because, like, when I leave for work in the morning, I can just throw it on and not have to, like, worry about going in the bathroom, changing clothes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That said, I got up, and I was, like, dodging that stuff that was on the floor to go pee. I step over my charger laptop, my laptop charger. And, like, I go to turn the TV off because we always fall asleep with the TV on. And I went mm-hmm. to turn the TV off. And, like, halfway through, like, me trying to figure, find the button, like, I just collapsed. Like, I just fell, like, for no reason at all. And, like, I grabbed onto the bed and, like, I hit my back on the foot of our bed and banged my head on our dresser. And I was, like, in, like, I was just, like, laying on the ground, like, what just happened and like my wife woke up freaked out and like i don't know what happened it was just like this weird thing and it wasn't like like i was sleepy but i i know i didn't fall asleep like but maybe i fell asleep standing up i don't know it was really weird but like i hit my head in our dresser and my head is killing me today because it hit me like right here like i hit, oh. I hit my head on the corner i'm surprised like my head didn't split open or anything, but I was like, ah, oh, it hurt. <sighs> uh, but I would love to, and to his point about the fast RMX thing, wasn't fast racing Neo or the, the Wii one, the original one for Wii, wasn't that originally pitched as an F-Zero game? And weren't they developing an F-Zero game for a Wii U launch? Wasn't that like they, a rumor? I think they, I think they pitched it and it didn't go through but they Nintendo loved the concept but they just didn't have give, they just let them uh, didn't let them do it and so um, that's where Fast Race and Neo came yeah shame I, I I like that idea though but like uh, 20 or 10 to 30 dollar downloads I think it's going to be reserved for like either a Box Boy sequel download or another Pushmo or something. I don't think they're going to mm-hmm. use it for any of their bigger franchises. Uh, so, but our, our the last question we're going to answer for this week's question block comes from Max Zalewski, which is a really awesome question <laughs> because, like, now <laughs> these are this is all I can think about. Uh, I found your show when I was downloading podcasts on my new Pixel and enjoying what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Uh, how do you f- guys feel about? ninja theory working on a linear stylized action game for nintendo 
in spinoffs for franchises like Fire Emblem, Kid Icarus, or a new IP exclusive. And we've talked about this. We've talked about Ninja Theory doing some kind of game for Nintendo. Um, I think a Kid Icarus game in the vein of like Devil May Cry would be amazing. I think, like, look, I know people think Kid Icarus is like one way, but this would be just like this amazing, just like WTF are you doing to this franchise, but in an awesome way. And instead of like blood and stuff, it could be like light coming out of these characters or like, I don't know. I don't know. Something cool, but oh, that'd be so cool. And big like god like like mm-hmm. like fighting gods as bosses and stuff. Well, I I I think the thing with Ninja Theory and uh, everybody, please don't be mad at me. Uh hate you, Ed. You're fired. They can't make nothing. They can't make nothing for or on Nintendo because they they produce a high quality and they kind of have a standard of telling good narrative stories and and doing good and they're kind of almost like platinum in a sense but they they work well on the on PlayStation products you know games for PlayStation um yes uh, the one they did for Neko uh, uh can I think enslaved enslaved uh, you know they they did something for another company. Um, you know with Hellblade being only on PlayStation, they know Sony's product so well. So for them to take time and somewhat downgrade their production to fit a Nintendo console, uh, I don't think they're really wanted to do that. Now, I'm not saying that they can't make a game for Nintendo Switch I don't think A they don't need none of Nintendo's franchises Yeah. they B Ninja Theory would have to do something um, where they don't have to spend a lot of money where they don't have to you know bring in motion capture or uh, different kind of specialists and research and stuff like if I'm going to ask for a game for Ninja Theory I want an original IP that only they could make and I kind of want it hand drawn or some kind of different art style and because Ninja Theory is more of an action based studio uh, somewhat a B level of Platinum um, not saying that they're bad or anything, but Platinum Games in Ninja Theory, they know action, but they have their own different way of developing them and right. their own systems. Ninja Theory will have to be willing to tell a story that's going to fit the Nintendo audience that doesn't feel quite like a PlayStation, a PlayStation game. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I, I I just think that Ninja Theory, as great as they are, they they fit good on Sony's platform. And like I said, if they was gonna do anything for Nintendo, it has to be something originally from them. Um, now, who knows what will happen in the future? I think uh, going back to the last question. I think if they were going to do something, a 999 game from Ninja Theory on a Nintendo console uh, using maybe Kid Icarus would work. You know, give us a five or six level kind of game for uh, for seven hours or something. And let's see how Ninja Theory does. And let's see how the sale goes for that. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just for me, Ninja Theory has a higher standard, I should say. Yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't even say it's like a higher standard. I just think like their production overall requires the tech that you know PlayStation and PC provide. On um, you know, yes. uh you know, I wouldn't say they would like have to lower their standards because I think Nintendo has the highest standards of anybody in the industry. But I mean, I I understand what you're saying. I just don't want somebody in the comments being like, "Oh, Nintendo, why are you saying Nintendo has low standards or whatever?" But like. 
and like a low, not lower standards, just downgrading their material to fit a Nintendo console. You yeah. see the high production that Ninja Ninja Theory is known for. That's yeah, pretty it good. Just, it just requires the power of what a PS4, a PC, or an Xbox One can re- can provide. Where Switch, I mean, don't get me wrong, now, love the console can't can't handle that kind of stuff. Can can I say? If Ninja Theory wants to take a game from Nintendo's IP, Project Hammer, that game that was supposed to come come out on GameCube or Wii U, one of those. Yeah. Or I would love to see them be like, "Hey, you guys did have an action game. How about you give yeah, it to where the, us? Like Let's that, it. it was like that Wii game where like you were swinging the remote around like a giant hammer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like give them that to Ninja Theory and let Ninja Theory redo it and recreate it and go about its business. I I think they could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I rem- man, I remember that showing off at like, it was before the Wii was even called the Wii. I think it was still being called the Revolution, and Game Informer Re- had this huge like cover story and stuff for Red Steel, and they were talking about all the games that were coming to Wii. And one of them was, it was still called like, it was still called like Legend of Zelda working title and it ended up being Twilight Princess and Red Steel was their cover story. And then, you know, Project, uh, it wasn't, was it called Project Hammer? Yeah, Project got, Hammer. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some other things too, but that was like the cool thing, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, I could see them doing that. I think, like you were saying, uh, Ninja Theory has such a distinct look to their games. You look, I right. mean, you look at like Heavenly Sword to Enslaved to even DMC and Hellblade. Like they all have this consistent look to them. You know, like Hellblade is very like that art style is very Heavenly Sword, right? It's very yes. dark. It's very dreary with a kind of like a stylized protagonist almost, like the hair and everything, and uh, it just has this very dark feel to it where like you know they would have to like I mean, I think color palette wise Enslaved is like their brightest game with <laughs> the jungles yes. and the and the you know the, the ships and yeah. the environments and stuff being very colorful uh, but but the, but DMC Devil May Cry their environments looks beautiful and the action just everything the the way that it looks it's just like this is phenomenal like it, it I, has a finesse to it man, now Corey, i i, I, I really say, want i really want dmc2 man i don't want devil may cry 5 i want dmc2 <laughs> yes I, that's what i want i will say for your kid icarus thing that i would get once again i would just have to give it to ray for it ray for it knows that art style and no it has good writing and comedy and Kid I think, Icarus is. I think have, I think DMC has some great comic comedic moments. Yes, it does. I just like I would I I think Nintendo like honestly has their stylized action game now in Bayonetta. I think like we I didn't mention it, and that's something we probably should have talked about since Bayonetta's out now. But like, uh, they were talking to Platinum about if like somebody tweeted at them and said, "Is Bayonetta ever coming back to PS4?" And they said, "Talk to Nintendo." Uh, which basically means like Nintendo, it's a Ninten- Nintendo franchise now, right? Like Bayonetta is Nintendo now, and it's, so like they have yeah. their quote DMC, they have like they have their stylized action game, and so like it would be really hard to see Ninja Theory try to compete with that. Not that like DMC is a like not that Bayonetta or DMC are like you know they're di- totally different games but they're competing for the same space and i don't think uh especially on a platform with so many great exclusives like i think mm-hmm. something in the vein of dmc would not particularly do well with something like bayonetta on on switch i i think dmc would for me personally i think dmc would complement bayonetta because both of those action games would be there yeah. i think what would happen is is that the ps4 and the xbox one market will be mad because now they're not getting that action pack anymore and if capcom is going to just release something just to please his fans and it's not up to snuff those those who those owners are stuck with that franchise and that game and they can't do nothing about it right yeah i mean like look 
I I would love to see DMC on Switch just as much as you would. Like I think mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think Dante complements Bayonetta very well. Like I mean, it's it's a similar type game, but the, it's just different enough to be like, okay, yeah, this scratches that itch, but isn't exactly the same thing. Uh, I would love to see a DMC remastered on Switch. Like I I, really, I would too. I really would. Like I think that that style of game fits well on the Switch, but at the same time it's like i understand why people would only want one or two versions of the that style game on a platform and like look i i i know capcom is the it's the worst kept secret right now is that dm devil may cry 5 is going to be shown on sony's stage at e3 this year like that's the, the big rumor and nobody will shut up about it apparently but like you know it's going to be a Sony exclusive, and if you want that, if you want that franchise to thrive other places without messing with Sony in the quote proper Devil May Cry universe, they could like they could hand off DMC two for Xbox and, and sw- maybe Switch, and Switch fans. Like, yeah, I would not mind that at all. You know, because like I have no affinity for Devil May Cry, like the original series. I don't care about that series at all. I think. Like, I even, after I played DMC, I went back to play the HD trilogy that came out. Mm-hmm. And it was like, man, these games are weird. Like, especially that first one is, like, really weird to me. And I know it started out as a Resident Evil game, and it kind of feels that way. Like, that, especially that first game. Like, and, and yeah. I played 3 a little bit, because I know people love 3. Uh, but even the that... The easier version of 3. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but, like, even that game felt really weird. And then I tried to play four and i was like this feels a little bit more modern but it still feels weird and to me like i love dmc but have no affinity for devil may cry (laughs) you know what (laughs) i mean like it's weird yeah it's action action uh some people call them hash uh, hack and slash but like action games like that is very limited and you only could think of Platinum or Ninja Theory because Koei Tecmo has stepped out of it with after Ninja Gaiden 3. Like, yeah, well, I mean, getting... that, team, that team's doing Neo now. They want to do different things. Yeah. So it's... Which is, who a, great, knows? Which is a fantastic game, by the way. Yes, it I, is. I finally and you could feel... Started playing oh, it. Oh, go ahead. I just, I finally started playing it, and it's it's fantastic it takes everything like i want to like about dark souls and gives me that like random loot stuff that i like from other games mm-hmm. man that and game that's why i get on why i feel like bloodborne is slower than neo like neo gives me i mean neo is kind of ninja guided in the, on that foundation and that uh and that engine and everything it's just that Neo just feels so fast, and it feels good. Now, if Ninja Theory want to get into, get into the Soul series for Nintendo, go right ahead. Literally, go right ahead. Yeah, I, I, I. If Ninja Theory and Nintendo got together and said they was making a some kind of Souls game for their system, and hey, maybe it could be Fire Emblem. Who knows? I'm down for it a hundred percent. Yeah, I man. Or give or give give, give them code name Steam. Yeah, give Ninja I mean, Theory code name Steam. That would be interesting. What if they took code name Steam and turned it into an action game instead of a strategy game? Like, or maybe like a like a Gears of War esque style like shooter, but had like mass effect style uh squad commands where like you could command mm-hmm. your squad to flank people and that would add the strategy element to it but then add like a loot based system to it to where like you're upgrade almost like a almost like a third person action XCOM game where you're controlling your units and each level you can take different units out uh, on t- into the level, but it would still have like a shooter feel to it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, where like you, you're kind of like upgrading the different parts of your characters. Like, I'm very, I'm very big on like customization and loot things right now, especially <laughs> in shooters. 
Um, I I said go for it if Ninja Theory could do it because I I would like to see Ninja Theory tackle another genre of gameplay, and I think that would be good. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I would love for them to try that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, man, I would I would I would just love to see what I would just want to know what Ninja Theory is working on in general. <laughs> you know, I mean, like I. I want these things, but I also am just like I, I just want to I know think what they're working on. I think we won't find nothing about Ninja Theory until 2020. Uh, I think you know they're still probably marketing Hellblade, probably still working on any bug fixes and stuff like that. Like they, they probably half of their team is looking at contracts for someone to come. For them to make a game for somebody, and I think another part, another part of their team is working on another game. Yeah, I, I think Ninja Theory. I think they're done with their vacation, and they're now getting busy planning out what their next move is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think the success of Hellblade really gave them a lot of cachet with people. You know, I think I think that game <laughs> did a lot better than they thought it was going to do, and that makes me really happy. But nah. hey, Ninja, hey, Ninja, Ninja Theory, give it to Kila Works to help them get Ryan fixed. <laughs> yeah, for real, dude. I try. I played the PS4 version the other day because it's it's the uh, PlayStation free game of the month. Yeah, and I'm just like, man, this game runs so much better on this platform, and I don't know <laughs> okay. why it shouldn't be this much better. Like, it's not a it, it's not an it, intense game. It it runs better on PS4 because this it was developed for that system. So all that uh, all that coding that they did for it in development, of course, is is perfect. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's uh. We'll see. I just I really want to know what Ninja Theory is working on. I think it would be cool to see them work on something like. <sighs> I don't want to say lighthearted because that's kind of wrong, but like a little bit more stylized, similar to what like Suda Fifty One does, but like yeah. give it that DMC style to it. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm just excited to play Bandit and talk about it. Ooh, Suda Fifty Suda Fifty One and Ninja Theory. That will be in. Oh, just let <laughs> just let Suda direct their next game. Oh, I would just be like, please bring this to the Switch. And I will buy the collection edition. <laughs> <laughs> I it like uh what was their uh Lighty Pop Chainsaw? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Man, that game Ooh. That game was uh different. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that game was cool though. Like all the weirdness aside, that game was like it it was better than it had any right to be, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So it was uh it was cool. I man, I now I just want all these games and it's going to make me sad when I can't have any of them cuz they don't exist. <laughs> you know what I was thinking of? I know we're about to go in a few. Uh Lost Planet. I've been watching like uh zero punctuation about the reviews from Lost Planet 1 to 3. And I wonder if Capcom ever is going to return to that series. Um do they want to? I, I mean, I think it would be interesting because I, I liked that, f- I liked the first game, and then the second game I got, and it was weird, but it I got it for 360, so it came with the Gears of War guys in it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't really care if this game is bad because I get to play more Gears of War before Gears Two comes out. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much my only thought process behind Lost Planet for Xbox 360. <laughs> uh, but I think it would be interesting for them to, especially with like, even if it didn't come to Switch, like with all like the tech and stuff, how they could build the planets out now. And yeah, like I think honestly, if Capcom wants to get into games as a service, Lost Planet would be like their destiny. Like, Ooh, yes. You know, like you go out, you have a, you have this hub camp thing where you trade in items for new things and, then you go back out and do like missions or strikes or you know i'm using destiny terms here so bear with me if you're not a destiny fan like that kind of stuff and then like maybe when their raids come out they could go out and do like big giant 
alien monsters uh, as raid bosses and stuff. Yeah, like I think that would be cool. I think yeah. that's what they would do if they got into the games as service, which by all accounts, Capcom needs something to generate some cash flow. <laughs> right, because these ports ain't going to last forever. Look, just port all the Resident Evil games to Switch. Just do it. Who cares? Just do it. Somebody said that Resident Evil 0, 1, 4, 5, and 6 will be on Switch by the end of the year. And I'll be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but uh, we've been going for a little bit, so I think we're gonna I think we're gonna wrap the show. This uh, was a good show. Yes. Uh, just one last thing, everybody. Uh, Virtuoso is doing the Switch port of Dark Souls. Um, I think they just revealed uh, who was doing the port for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't get that. I. I mean, I saw it, but I thought some of these other qu- stories were I thought we would have too much of a conversation with all the things we talked about already <laughs> so uh, but yeah uh, where is this Virtuous is handling the port for Namco for Bandai Namco for Dark Souls for Switch so I don't really know who they are but cool good for them uh, yes but anyways this remember you can email your questions again to nintendo power block at gmail.com with the uh subject line question block that way we know or expansion pack if you want to enter the contest we will be announcing the giveaway on tuesday's episode so if you want to stick around for that subscribe to us on youtube at youtube.com slash ngr radio uh or on a podcast service uh around the globe Usually iTunes works best. Uh, If you want to rate us there, leave a comment. That'd be great. Um, Also, by the time this goes up, or maybe not by the time this goes up, by the time the next episode comes up, you might see some new logos for NGR's podcasts. So uh, not like like real logos. Like they'll be the logos you know and love, just new like key art for them. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, remember to... Download our family of shows, Nerds Gone Platinum, Arsenal X, NGR Radio, World 1-1, and of course, Nintendo Power Block. Look out for some new content from NGR Radio on YouTube. So subscribe to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash NGR Radio. Uh, Larry and I were actually talking about a uh, spinoff show for World 1-1 called Minus World. So we're pitching ideas back and forth, me and him. So look out for that in the coming weeks. Uh Hey. Watch Expansion Pack every Monday at noon. That's Nintendo Power Block spinoff show where we talk about whatever you write into us about. Could be Nintendo related, could not be Nintendo related, could be food related. Kind of feel like food right now. <laughs> feel like <laughs> so. Uh, Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that Co, and you can find my podcast Optional Opinion on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play, and other podcast apps. Yeah, yeah check it out. You can find me at Corey and HD on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me on NGR Radio and a plethora of other shows on the NGR Radio Network. Please, again, our road to 500 begins with you. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. Even if you're an audio listener, uh, there is a link in the bio to the uh, YouTube page. So just click it, subscribe. Uh, we encourage yes. you to do that because uh, we'll be able to do a lot more fun things for you at 500 subs. So, uh, Come check us out. Come check out our YouTube-only content. Come check out our Let's Plays and stuff. Uh, Like I said, once I start this new job and stuff, Ed and I will be on a different schedule and be able to figure some things out uh, for our pod and play stuff. So, uh, But until then, and until Tuesday, we love you. Bye, everybody.